kick off on that is Code Oregon. Um, the basic idea is that um, you know we're we're working with a local organization called Work Systems that um, they're part of a huge network nationally of these things called workforce investment boards. Um, the general idea is whenever you hear that a government talk about jobs, like workforce investment boards is one of the big things that they do to try to make jobs work. So this is retraining. It's, you know, unemployment. It's those, those kinds of things. Um, what we kind of, we, the people from work systems here in Oregon came to us and they were like, we're really interested in Treehouse and we're really interested in finding out, you know, how we can connect the education that a student could get at Treehouse to a shortfall that we're seeing in position, like developer positions here in Portland. I think the last number I saw was there are 740 open um, software positions, well, like developer and design positions in Portland, specifically relating to software. Um, and they basically don't know how they're gonna fill them. Like there aren't enough people here to fill them. And so, and people are talking about that nationwide. The, the scale changes depending on who you talk to and what month they do the study. But the general gist is there's a shortage of people who can actually fill, fill all these technology jobs that are needed. Um, so, so here in Oregon, what we did is we basically said, okay, like we'll work with you. And um, you know, we made available 10,000 spots where someone who wants to retrain or train for the first time as a programmer or as a designer can uh, come and learn to code with us at, at Treehouse. Um, and then they're, they'll also be connected to work systems, this local organization that's very tapped into the hiring situation here in Oregon um, to help them then take that from learning to code to getting a job in software. Um, overall with code to work, I mean, our attitude is just what it sounds like. Like, let's, let's take somebody who doesn't know how to code, let's teach them how to code, and then let's turn that into a lifelong career. Um, that, that has two steps though. And that's one thing that a lot of people overlook. Like there's the step of teaching somebody how to code. A lot of people are doing that. There's another step, which is, okay, there aren't enough people to fill these positions that are available. How do we actually get companies to look at people who don't have five years of programming experience and say, you know what, like what we need to do is so important. Like this thing we're building is so important that we'll actually take somebody and invest in them and take them from, like, we're not saying bring somebody in off the street but that doesn't know how to code, but we're just saying take somebody who doesn't have five years of experience but instead has six months of experience but is building things, does know how to code, and, you know, you help them get that experience so that they can, so that they can, uh, they can build a career and you can build the thing you want built. And so, you know, that that's the big picture is can we change the mindset of society at large to say, hey, this coding thing is something I should really look into. And can we change the mindset of employers at, at large to say, you know what, like we'll take a risk on somebody who's maybe a little less experienced so that, you know, the we can build these things we want to build, we can do these projects we want to do. Um, yeah.